Hello and welcome to the first 2.4 teaser video. So we've got a lot of cool capabilities coming in 2.4. Today I want to focus on templating and kind of show you how that can significantly reduce your projects and the amount of work you have to do to move large amounts of data. Uh, so let's jump in it. So I've got the 2.4 release bits. I just unzipped them here. Uh, one really cool thing in 2.4, I won't get into the details here, is we do have an ability on Windows to install as a service now. So you just launch this install service. So my demo is going to be running as a, as a Windows service. All right, so let's get into it. Once, once we're up and going, I'm going to go to localhost 45.245, sign in. So I've got a blank project. So the, the, the key problem that templating solves is, let me, let me show you here. I've got a OPC server, Cap Server X in this case, and it's got these motors. Now these motors are identical, right? Someone did the work to come in here and name these really similar in a similar fashion, gave them the same uh, tag, tag names. The only difference is this motor identifier. And this could be at the channel level, you know, it could be down in the... Um, the tag, the tag grouping space, et cetera. But there's a few unique identifiers that are unique across these machines. Uh, otherwise, it's the same. So historically in HiByte, you would have come in and created, you know, this is prior to 2.4, an OPC connection. I'm just going to go local host, uh, 49, 320. And once you're in here, you go to inputs, and in which you'd, you'd go to browse, and you'd, you'd go down and look at that channel. And, you know, you'd import one of these, and we have some ways to make that easy, you know, and then you'd have all these tags and you'd go in and do a test read, et cetera. And then you need to go and port 211 and 212 and you, you quickly, you know, customers would quickly be like, hey, this is really cool, but how do I do this more efficiently? Now we have a great uh, answer to that question. So I'm going to delete this. I'm going to go back to kind of a blank slate. So instead of going creating individual tags as inputs, one of the cool features we had in 2.4 is the ability to have a collection of, of tags in OPC UA. So what I'm going to do is create an input and the default is tag, which uh, you've seen, but I'm going to switch it to collection. And I'm going to call this thing motor. And a collection is nothing other than a, a uh, list of tags to go and read. So I'm going to hit find. And what I'm going to do is grab the first one. So I'm just going to grab all the data for B210 motor. So I'm gonna, just like the other browser, I'm going to bring everything in. But instead of bringing them in as individual inputs, now they're part of this collection. So let me just submit that quick. And if I do a test read, You'll see what the what Intelligence Hub is doing behind the scenes is it's reading each individual tag and then it's coming back as a named value pair. In this case, this is motor 210 and string 10 um, as the identifier. So now I have a collection of tags. What I want is to gener genericize this collection, right? So it can represent all of those tags. So this is a little bit of manual labor, uh, but I only have to do it once. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an edit and I'm going to go in here and replace the motor identifier with a template parameter, and this is the syntax for that. I'm going to copy that because I'm going to have to do this again. The other thing I'm going to do is remove the 210 from the, the title or the tag name. That way, if I'm indexing 210, 211, 212, I don't have to worry about the, the, the 210 showing up in the actual name. So I'm going to do that across the board. I'm just going to go through and edit all these, and I'm just going to replace that 210 part. And I apologize, this part is a little tedious, but again, I only need to do it once. In this, you know, if you had a large large collection, it might make sense to, to do this outside of the, the UI and then load it in to HiByte, uh, at least on the initial setup, just to make it uh, less clicks. So, all right. All right, so by default, I've, I've changed that. And now the literal tag addresses have this in it, right? If I'm not going to replace it with anything. So if I hit read, this is going to fail because that's an invalid address. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to turn on templating for this input, and I'm really only going to use templating down here to go and control the default value of that motor ID parameter. So I'm going to replace it with 210 by default, meaning if, if no caller provides me with a motor ID, I am just going to default to 210, and it's still going to fail. There you go. So you'll see uh, now I'm reading 210. So what I could do, you know, I can go down here and switch it to 211, hit save, and the default again will switch to 211. You'll see string 11 comes back. So I'm going to switch it back to 210. And this is what I'm using templating to provide a default, but this is really a parameterized input. It's saying, hey, when you do this read, you need to provide this motor ID. I could have multiple IDs, you know, site line IDs, et cetera, in here and, and manage multiple, but I'm just going to use motor ID for this example. So now we have a single OPC input that's templatized or uh, parameterized, and we can pass in the motor ID. So now let's go build the model. So I'm going to create a model. In this case, the model, you know, it's, it's going to look exactly the same as uh, the definition here. So this one isn't like terribly exciting, but 
you know, if I was mixing data, you could see um, from different sources, then, then the modeling piece makes more sense. So volts, and I'm just gonna kind of copy vibration, if I can spell. Still working on it. <laughs> uh, let's see, error, constant, and last amps. Now, in the, you know, in the old way of doing this, I would have created a single model, but when I went to create the instances, that's where it would turn into N, right? I would have to go create an instance for every motor and do the mapping. So in this case, I'm just gonna call this motor. I'm gonna base it off the motor model. Now, the beauty of this is I'm only gonna do the mapping once. This is a templatized thing. I'm just gonna drag over the fields that match. Constant error, vibration, volts. And I'm gonna save that. Uh, and then I'm gonna read this. Now by default, this is gonna read 210, right? Because that's what the input was, was specifying as its default. And we're not passing anything to this input to override it, right? So we're, we're only reading 210. But I wanna control the templating at this layer. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna turn on templating up here. The templated name, so the name that gets generated from the instance on templating, I'm gonna do this to it. I'm gonna parameterize that. So I get unique names. Uh, and the other thing I'm going to do is add the motor ID here, and I'm going to arrange it. You know, I could do 210, comma, it's a, just a comma separated list, 212, but we have a shorthand syntax to just say 210 to 213. Now, when I read this, it's going to return the first result, so it's still going to return uh, 210, right? But, you know, if I change the first result to 211, it's, it's still going to be 210 because the input is providing that 210 default. So the last piece I need to do here is I actually need to pass as a parameter the motor ID I'm generating at this level down. So it's the same syntax to say motor ID is equal to this parameter motor ID. And I've got to copy this. Oops. What I'm going to do is copy this across all my inputs. It looks like I'm actually missing. No, oh, I got it. All right, so I'm just gonna copy this down the list. Anytime I reference this input, I'm gonna pass in the override to say, give it this. And what it means is this motor ID is gonna come from this list. So now when I save and read this, again, I'm still only gonna get the first one because the test read is just gonna read the first one in the index. But now this is where the magic happens. I'm gonna go create an MQTT connection to my local uh, mosquito broker. One, leave it all defaults, and then I just want an output. So I'm gonna create an output. I'm gonna call it motors, and I'm gonna go motors, uh, this dot motor ID, and I've gotta go, so the output is gonna have some field called a motor ID, and I just wanna populate it there. So it's the one last thing I need to do, is I'm gonna go in and add to this a motor ID field to my model just to make it really obvious. Uh, and then in my usage of the model, what I'm gonna do for that motor ID is I'm gonna fill it in with the default. So this is gonna come from the templated parameter and this is just a way to see what the parameter looks like. You'll see if I do the test read. All right, so now the very last thing, I'm gonna send the data out uh, to my UNS. So I'm gonna grab the instance, which is my templated motors. I'm gonna grab my output, which is the motor's output. I'm just gonna send it out every second. And if I did my work right, um, clear the buffer, turn on auto scroll, and you'll see each one mo the motors gets generated. So if I click on 212, that's 212. You know, 210 is 210, 211, 213. Now, if I added another motor, the only thing I need to do in high byte uh, to reflect that is to go into the mode, the instance definition you know, make this go to 214, right? So I'm through the single flow, single instance, single input, single flow, I'm passing data for all the motors. So that's pretty, that's pretty awesome, right? It's quite the optimization. Now let's say, you know, the next question that comes out is I got one motor that's weird, right? It needs its own thing. It doesn't follow the templates. How do you do that? So we have a new templates view. You can jump in, you can see, you know, these are all the concrete templates that that, uh, concrete instances that that template's generating. I can go to like 213, and do a test read and see exactly what comes back. So let's say 210 or 212 is the weird one. So I'm gonna select that, do a test read, and let's say this string is wrong. 
So what I can do is I can either create concrete instances from everything in the template, or I can just choose 212. So I'm just going to choose 212. And then down in the error definition, I'm going to do something like this. Fixed. Because this is just a string. And I can save this uh, and do a test read. And you'll see that uh, the test read comes back. It's 12. Um, I'm passing you know, 212 to all the IDs, etc. And fixed comes back. So now what I'm going to do is go back into my model instance. I'm going to remove two, uh, 12 from the template list. Skip 212, go to 213. And then in my flow, I'm just going to grab instance 212, which is unique, and pull that individually into the source. Hit save. And now if I did my job right again, uh, we've dealt with the one-off. So you, still, you can see 212 is still in this list. It's correct and all the other ones are generated too. So that's a quick dive into templating. Uh, there's a lot more to it uh, in terms of what you can do with it. It's really a way to optimize projects so you can get more data in less clicks. So it's a pretty slick feature. If you're starting to scratch your head and like, how are we gonna do this for 10,000 motors? Well, here's a pretty good way uh, to speed that up. So try it out, uh, enjoy it, and more to come.